the City Travel with Kids podcast, helping you plan big city trips with kids. Brought to you by Little City Trips. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of City Travel with Kids. I'm your host, Kerry, and today we're going to be talking about all things Hong Kong. I'm joined today by my co-host, Marta, in Dublin. Hi, Marta. How are you? Hi, Kerry. I'm great. Thank you. It's lovely to have you on this side of the microphone with me today. In case anyone missed it, we interviewed Marta last week all about her home city of Rome. So you can jump back to episode one of City Travel with Kids if you'd like to hear that. But today is going to be about Hong Kong. We're shortly going to be joined by our co-host, Marion, who's not only lived in Hong Kong with children herself, She'll also be chatting with Carolyn Deer, another long Tong Hong Kong resident and also editor of Hong Kong Family Traveller magazine. So, Marta, have you ever been to Hong Kong? I have. I was in Hong Kong um, a long time ago, about maybe 10 years ago. So that meant it was before I had the kids. And it was a really interesting experience because I went there with my husband. And for both of us, it was the very first time in a big Asian city. The first time in Asia, actually. And, you know, when you come from Europe, you know, we live in Dublin, that first impact with this just big, high rise, hot, busy city was pretty strong. Uh, Good, excellent experience. We had a great time in Hong Kong. But, yeah, I remember it as, um, you know, quite something. (laughs) It's certainly a city that makes an impact and I'm very similar to yourself. I have stopped in Hong Kong a couple of times, but both of those were pre-children and definitely high rises, big hills and central overload of things that I remember. So it'd be really interesting to hear today what Marion and Carolyn have to say about Hong Kong and how it can be kid friendly. Yeah, I really think, you know, it's the kind of city that you really want some insider tips on how to deal with kids. Uh, it would be really interesting, you know, to to go with children. I can see that there's a lot there, but just, even just some practical uh, advice on how to tackle such a big city. I think that would be really interesting to listen to. Well, before we jump into the interview, though, we like to cover off a question from one of our readers from our City Travel with Kids Facebook group. Marta, would you like to read out the question we have for this week? Yes. So we have a question that says, I am flying through Singapore on my way to Australia this summer with my 18 month old. We will only be stopping for less than 24 hours. I am wondering if it's worth taking one of those fold up strollers on the plane with me or should I just take my Ergo baby carrier? I know, Kerry, you stopped in Singapore before with your three kids. So what do you think? Yeah, this is a tricky one. They they seem to mention that they only have one child, which makes a big difference to when you're traveling with Mm. three. I would be inclined to take both if you can. But if I had a choice, I think it's an easy enough city that you can take the stroller with you. So you would have the convenience of having the stroller in the airport and having it during the short break. My, My main reason for saying that over a carrier is that Singapore can be quite hot and sweaty if you're carrying a child around all the time is my experience okay so that definitely yeah having them on on a stroller that would be easier and I think she mentioned the little fold-up ones for the plane so I guess the convenience of having something that you can use straight away as you get off as well you know without the worrying or having to retrieve it from the luggage belt and all that kind of stuff that's right especially if you've only got a short stopover you, you don't want to be waiting around with luggage you can check everything else straight through perhaps if you've got a stopover but just take that that one item on the plane with you yeah well you know it's interesting I think and I kind of mentioned this because we will be dedicating a whole next episode to the essential baby gear to have on travel that includes the best strollers that you can keep on the plane or the best ones for city trips Uh, so make sure you subscribe and tune in for episode three where we will be talking everything from baby carriers to car seats I'm really looking forward to that one actually I think you know that travel gear is one of my one of my fortes in family travel I know I always check your blog for it <laughs> <laughs> right so without further ado let's start talking about this week's destination which is hong kong it's one of the most vibrant cities in the world but also one of the most densely populated not to mention hilly urban centers with its iconic skyline picturesque mountains and amazing foodie scene is it really a place we can explore with kids our co-editor marion spoke with carolyn earlier this week to talk about planning a trip to hong kong before we jump into the episode we're just going to remind you that you can be kept up to date with all our episodes by subscribing to our 
podcast on your favorite podcast player. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, as well as playing the episodes from our website. If you have any more questions about Hong Kong after listening to today's episode or any other family travel questions, you can jump over to our Facebook group called City Travel with Kids. We'd love to see you there. You can also find more about Hong Kong on our family travel planning website, which is called Little City Trips. And if you miss anything from today's show, you can grab the show notes at littlecitytrips.com slash podcast. We're going to be including the links to all the useful things that are mentioned in today's episode, including the perfect three-day itinerary for visiting Hong Kong. And one more thing, if you do enjoy our show, could you do us a big favor and please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform? This is what helps other people find our podcast and would be a great favor to us. So without further ado, we're going to pass over to Marion now to hear all about Hong Kong. Hello, today I'm joined by Carolyn Deer, who is the editor and publisher of Hong Kong Family Traveller magazine. Carolyn has lived in Hong Kong for 10 years and is mum to four children aged from 10 to 16. She moved to Hong Kong from Sydney in 2010 when her children were aged 1, 3, 5 and 7, so she definitely has a lot of experience entertaining kids in Hong Kong. Now, as some of our listeners will know, I also lived in Hong Kong until recently, and I do know Carolyn personally from there. So I'm excited to be catching up with her today, and I'm looking forward to hearing her recommendations for Hong Kong. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Marianne. Thank you so much for inviting me on. This is great. So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and your family and a bit more about your Hong Kong experience so far? Sure. So originally, I'm English um, from Berkshire in the UK, um, and in 2001, I moved to Sydney with my husband because he had work commitments. We lived in Sydney for about just over nine years. And then due to my husband's work again, we were moved up to Hong Kong. So we arrived in Hong Kong in July 2010 with four fairly young children. I guess my son was one at just one and a half. So yes, they were they were very young. And we arrived in um, in a black rainstorm, in a typhoon, um, <laughs> in searing heat. So it was a, a bit of a baptism by fire. Um, but we've been here for 10 years now and really have enjoyed every minute. Awesome. So we're expecting a lot of good insider knowledge from you today. Absolutely. Now, Hong Kong is famous for being a work hard, play hard city. And it's known to be busy and chaotic and a bit of a party town. So I think a lot of people don't really think of it as being particularly family friendly. So why do you think Hong Kong is a great city to visit with kids? I think you're absolutely right when you say that. And we have had not resistance, maybe a little bit of reluctance from family members who were really, really keen to visit us in Sydney. Um, there hasn't been quite the enthusiasm for Hong Kong. I think the image of Hong Kong and definitely the image that is um, definitely portrayed by the government to the rest of the world is that it is a bit of a concrete jungle, um, mainly dominated by shopping malls, hotels, and very city city living which to an extent is absolutely true. And I have to admit, I was a bit nervous when we first moved here. I'd never been to Hong Kong before. And I had heard that it was a bit of a concrete jungle and obviously coming from somewhere as full of fresh air and green space as Sydney. Um, yeah, I was a little bit worried. But what people tend not to know about Hong Kong and was something that took me by surprise and something that is not promoted at all really by the travel bureau here is Hong Kong's backyard. Um, Hong Kong Island um, itself is very green, has once you're outside of Central and Wan Chai and those concrete areas, um, it's full of parks and hikes and beaches. And when you go over to Kowloon, which is the mainland side, there is a huge backyard that sort of runs right up to the Chinese border, which also is very rural, full of farms. In fact, I think about 65 to 70% of Hong Kong is actually um, country park. Um, the country parks were designated by one of the governor generals back in the 1970s, and they are just an excellent resource for hiking and just getting out of the concrete jungle and enjoying the great outdoors. Um, so it is something that did surprise me, but with the kids, it's been fantastic. There really is a great beach life up here. Um, and lots and lots of outdoorsy things that you can do. Yeah, great. And I I have to agree, because that's the thing that surprised me most when we moved there as well, was A, the, the fantastic hiking, 
and mm. also the beaches. I just had no idea that Hong Kong had great beaches. No, nor did I. So that was a complete surprise. And because Hong Kong is so small, it makes them extremely accessible from wherever you live in Hong Kong. So you could be living right in the middle of Central or right in the middle of Wan Chai, but a hike or a beach is never more than maybe a 10 minute taxi ride away. Uh-huh. Um, which is wonderful. Great. Okay, I look forward to getting more into that later. But before we get on to the fun stuff, let's quickly talk about some of the important things we need to know before we go to Hong Kong. So can you just fill us in with maybe things like best time to visit, any safety issues or language barriers? Okay, um, I'll start off with the safety issue and just say it is the safest place we have ever lived. I would argue it's one of the safest places on the planet. Um, we have never heard of anybody being pickpocketed or anything, really. Um, so there's absolutely no worries at all. I run regularly in the dark at night through subways and feeling absolutely unthreatened, Um it's, yeah, it's really brilliant for, from a safety point of view. In terms of language, the two official languages here are Cantonese and English. Sometimes English can be a bit of a struggle, especially with some of the taxi drivers. Um, so it might be worth downloading uh, maybe a taxi translator app. Generally, it's okay, but sometimes you do meet the odd shopkeeper or taxi driver that isn't so great at speaking English. There are a lot of expats living here, so English is widely spoken. All the menus in restaurants are in English, so there's no no real worries with the language. Best time to visit. Um, the weather is, um, yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge. I would say the best, the absolute best time of year to come is in the autumn, so back end of September, October, November through to December. This time of year, the typhoon season is ended. The temperatures start dropping. The humidity drops right down. There's not very much rainfall. In fact, barely any rainfall at all. And you end up with these beautiful blue sky days, quite crisp in the mornings, just perfect. Um, The hottest time of year is June, July, August, and probably most of September. Um, The heat is, I mean, it is searingly hot. I would say hotter than Singapore. This is also typhoon season. Typhoon season runs from around July through till about sort of September, October. Um, The rainy season is end of March, beginning of April. That runs through till about June or July. And I would probably not recommend coming January, February. It tends tends to be very low cloud, quite polluted at that time of year. Although it is a lot cooler, it's it's a bit of a grey time of year. So I would probably, first choice would be autumn, definitely. And actually, it gets surprisingly cold in the winter there, doesn't it? And it's something else I didn't realise until we moved there. Yeah. It does get surprisingly cold. Um, By December, you're probably out of sort of ocean swimming weather. Um, All of the public pools shut on the 31st of October, even though for me as a Brit, I'm quite happy to swim throughout November. Um, They reopen again on the 1st of April. Um, January and February, yeah, can be very, very cold, depending on the year. We've had years when it's got right down to about three degrees. Um, Other years where it hasn't really dipped much below about 22, 23 so it does depend on the year, but it can, yes, it can get cold. But the main thing is avoid the summer because it's too hot yeah. and humid and pretty uncomfortable, isn't it, for sightseeing and things? It's very, very humid. So it's a very, very dense heat. I don't know if you're good in heat. Yeah, you'll probably, I mean, it's great for beaches and things, but it's a big heat. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So let's now get into the fun stuff. Let's talk about all the fabulous things there are to do in Hong Kong. Now, I think a lot of people still use Hong Kong as a stopover city. So we're going to talk about what we can get done if we only have three days in Hong Kong. Okay, so when you land in Hong Kong, you land on Lantau Island. Now, the big attractions on Lantau Island are Disneyland, which is smaller than probably other Disneylands throughout the world. But it's still a really fun day. You can do it in a day um, and it's very close to the airport. Um, so that's totally doable and a lot of fun for kids. There's a lot of um, younger kid type rides and they have a nice firework display in the evening. Other th- attractions on Lantau are the Big Buddha. Um, you catch a 
cable car from Tung Chung, which is the main town there. And that takes you, it's a wonderful, wonderful sort of 45 minute cable car ride. You go right up over the airport, which is fantastic. Like my son is obsessed with transport. Mm-hmm. Um, and he found that fantastic watching all the planes and all the building work that they're doing with the runways down there. It was really fantastic. And then it sweeps you over the mountains and then suddenly it's just rolling green kind of emerald mountains in the ocean. And then eventually you come into um, the area where the, the big Buddha is and then you can wander around and have a look at that. So that's that's a really nice day out. If you're into theme parks, the other good one is Ocean Park, which this is actually on Hong Kong Island. So you need to come over to the island for that. And it's down on the south side. Um, my kids argue that Ocean Park is much better fun than Disneyland because I think it has a few kind of bigger rides and roller coasters. But it's still fun for the whole family. The only thing I would say with Ocean Park, if you've got smaller children, they do have a lot of height restrictions on a lot of the rides. So maybe watch out for that if your children are aged sort of between about three and five, it can get a bit tricky. Although um, I have to I have to say, it, it's my kids' favourite thing about Hong Kong and they still ask to go back there all the time. Yeah, the Ocean Park, it's a real goodie. The other obvious one, it's a very touristy thing, but I think it's fabulous, the peak. I mean, you just don't get, well, there are other good views in Hong Kong, but the peak is fantastic. On a clear day, beautiful views. Um, there's a nice flat sort of stroller-friendly walk that, could, that you can do around the perimeter of the peak with amazing views all the way around so you go from sort of overlooking the Lama Channel to overlooking all of the city so that you can see out to Lantau and Kowloon and the harbour it's really fabulous it's about three and a half kilometres it's shaded and it's it's completely flat so if you've got strollers and whatever it's it's really friendly for that the peak has been undergoing a little bit of refurbishment at the moment not a lot is open although Last month, Gordon Ramsay opened um, a restaurant up there, oh, interesting. which is a lot of fun and is very family friendly. He does a great breakfast brunch option with lots of pancake stacks and sort of kid friendly food. Um, it's also very nice in the evening, very um, British oriented food. And what is the name of um, that restaurant? It is called Bread Street Kitchen. Okay. And it's in the main sort of concourse when you come up on the peak. I would also um, just want to point out that the peak tram is shut at the moment for refurbishment. They haven't released a clear date actually when it will reopen, but I think it will be shut for sort of the next few months. So if you're coming to Hong Kong over sort of spring, summer 2019, um, the, the peak tram may not be open. Um, so so how, how else can we get up there if we can't go up on the tram? You can catch a taxi from Central or you can get a bus from the bus terminal in Central. Um, it's a double decker bus. And it's kind of, it's a bit of a roller coaster ride in itself, actually. It's probably worth doing just for the thrill aspect. You can also walk up the peak, although if you've got younger children, they might not enjoy that too much. <laughs> um, I do drag mine up. Mine are sort of 10 plus now, and I do drag them up now and again. If you take a taxi out to um, Pok Falam Riding Stables, there's a beautiful walk all past Pok Falam Reservoir. It's very easy. It's, it's a paved walk. But it does get quite steep and it takes you all the way up to the top of the peak. Um, probably takes about 40 minutes. That's quite nice. Probably nicer to come down that way, actually. Okay. Um, okay. So, yes, at the moment, it's public transport or taxi only um, while, the peak, while the peak tram is being refurbished. But you still recommend it to go up there for the views? I still recommend it because the views are superb and it's a really nice walk around. It's called the Lugard Road Walk, which is really nice. Um, and they are opening more. As I say, it's been shut for a long time. All the shops, all the restaurants shut down, but they will be doing a big reveal this summer. Um, I haven't had much information yet about what they will be revealing, but there will be new restaurants, new shops, new entertainment up there from summer 2019. Okay, so great to look look into some more if you're visiting Hong Kong after that. Absolutely, yes. Okay, and what about getting to these places, like getting out to Hong Kong Disneyland, getting to Ocean Park? Um, what's the best way to get around? Um, Hong Kong has an excellent um, public rail transport system called the MTR, um, Mass Transit Rail. It's a bit like the London Underground or the New York Metro, I guess. It's very 
clean, it's very efficient, it runs strictly to time, there's trains all the time, um, and it's very, very cheap as well. Um, you can buy something called an octopus card when you arrive in Hong Kong, which is a bit like the Sydney Opal card or the London Oyster card. Um, you top it up at 7-Elevens or at stations, and then you can just use that when you're traveling rather than juggling, you know, change. Um, there's one for children, so you get a discount if you're a child, and there's a green one for senior citizens. Um, but you can, you can buy them in any MTR station. Otherwise, taxis are pretty cheap, pretty easy to get around in. Um, we use taxis quite a lot. There is a small Uber network as well, if you have an Uber app, and the buses are fairly efficient as well. Public transport is good in Hong Kong. And uh, okay, what about um, things like buying tickets for all these attractions? Do you have any tips on how we can get discounts or should we pre-purchase? Can we buy when we get there? Yeah, you can buy when, I mean, you can buy online, you can buy when you get there. I mean, Disneyland, there's a ticket office in Central Station where you can pre, pre-buy pre tickets if you pop in. Um, otherwise, I think Kluke, K-L-O-O-K, um, has kind of made quite a few inroads into ticket buying. Most things you just turn up to and you can buy it then and there, like the, the cable car for the Buddha. I mean, if you just turn up at the cable car depot in Tung Chung, you can just buy the tickets on the spot. Yeah. I think one thing important to note in Hong Kong, though, is everywhere is really busy, isn't it? And so you do end up with queues exactly. a lot. And yeah, we, exactly. we found if you get there early, it makes a big difference. It does. I'd say with Disneyland, definitely get there before it. I think it opens at about 10 o'clock, but definitely get there. Before it after. opens, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and the same with Ocean Park. Although Ocean Park, interestingly, doesn't really get super busy until midday. So if you get there sort of about opening time at 10, it's it's not too bad. If you can try and go midweek and outside of school holidays or outside of the local school holidays, that really helps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else that we shouldn't miss in our three days? Yeah, I'd say Stanley Market is a really good fun. Um, the market aspect, they're more sort of fixed shops now than they used to be but they're really it's it's really nice for a stroll it's undercover so if it's raining you can still go down and stanley has a really nice pirate ship kind of play area pedestrianized streets and some really family friendly restaurants down there as well there's a couple of pubs on the seafront and um, a pizza express um, and some coffee shops so it's very family friendly it's it's just a nice day out if you want to zhuzh it up a bit, you can catch the Aqua Luna, which is a typical Chinese junk um, from Central or from TST. Um, you need to check online and that will sail you all the way down the island and drop you off at um, Stanley Pier. And one other thing I wanted to just talk about is um, we talked about getting around by public transport. What about walking? Talk to us about if we've got young kids with strollers, because Hong Kong is not very stroller friendly. Yeah, is it? not very stroller friendly. Central is kind of built on, well, the bottom of the peak, really. So it can be, it, it is very, very steep. When you sort of go up into Soho and the sort of the bottom end of mid levels, it is incredibly steep and there aren't the pavements are very narrow and nothing is really pedestrianized. It's it's kind of very unlike Singapore. Um, if you've got very small child, maybe look at a baby carrier or a sling or a backpack. And it's also very, very busy, like even on the flatter parts of Central, like the High Street, um, Queen's Road, it's pedestrian heavy. It's there's a lot of people. Yeah, so maybe put some thought into that before coming. I wouldn't advise strollers sort of up through Soho um, and up through mid-levels, um, which is why taxis are so useful. They are cheap and you can kind of jump in them. And like, for example, if you wanted to go up and have a look at the Botanical Gardens, which is also worth a visit, it would be worth rather, you can walk up there, but I would suggest just grabbing a taxi. It, it will cost you I don't know, twenty, thirty dollars, and drop you right where you need to be. Yeah. So there's lots of great family attractions, but it's not really a city to just wander around sightseeing in the city with young not, kids, really, is it? it? Yeah, especially in the heat as well. It's yeah. tricky. If kids are older, great. If they're out of out of the stroller, um, you know, sort of seven, eight plus, 
um, should be no problem. But it's, yeah, it's not incredibly stroller friendly. Okay. Anything else that we can fit into our three days? Um, I'd also say take a look at the markets on Kowloon side. Um, they're a bit more bustling and a bit more market-like than Stanley, uh, a little bit more hardcore. The ladies market is good during the day in Mong Kok. Temple Street market is good fun at night as well when it gets dark. Um, you can go along. There's lots of sort of street food available. Um, you can haggle, have a look at all the stalls. That's good fun. And also I was going to say the Jade Market in Yao Mate. It's only small. It's undercover. But it's really fascinating to have a wander around and look at all the jade on the sale. Um, some of it is incredibly expensive and some of it is a bit more wallet friendly. Um, but that's good fun as well. So I'd say definitely check out the markets because it's a really sort of piece of local life. Yeah, I think it's a great, great way to see what you probably imagine Hong Kong to be. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're traveling from Hong Kong Island to Kowloon, obviously take Star Ferry, oh, yes. which is a fantastic way to travel. The, the harbour has been reclaimed so much. The ferry ride is not actually very long now. It's only about five or 10 minutes, but it's very cheap. It's gosh, like a dollar or two dollars or something to, to travel, but it's good fun. And it's a nice way of seeing the harbour. You get great skyline views, don't you? Great skyline views. Yeah. On both sides. It's yeah. good to do it nice actually as well. Definitely. Okay. So we've got lots of fun things to do there. What if we have longer than three days? Are there anything, any attractions yeah. or day trips we could add on to yeah. that? If you've got longer, I would say definitely have a look at the outlying islands. Hong Kong is basically made up of hundreds of islands of which Lantau is the biggest and Hong Kong Island is, I don't know, maybe third or fourth large, largest. But there are also a heap of smaller islands. Um, if you go into Central, go to the Central Ferry Piers and you can jump on a ferry. There's about five or six wharfs, I think, I can't remember. And you jump on a ferry and you can go out to any of the islands. Um, I would recommend maybe catching the Discovery Bay Ferry. Discovery Bay is fun with kids, lots of family friendly restaurants over there. There's a nice beach and there's a little play park on the beach. That's a nice day out. Um, Lama Island is another good one. You can sail across to Lama. There's a walk, if it's a quarter time of year, there's a nice walk that you can do over the island. And there's lots of nice um, kind of typical Chinese seafood restaurants over there as well. We actually did that walk with a stroller and I do not recommend doing that. <laughs> no, we did it with scooters once. Uh, that was a big no. <laughs> it's quite steep. I think with older children, it's probably quite good. But if you've got younger children, there's a couple of beaches there that you can kind of access fairly easily. Um, so you can spend the day on the beach and in the area area that the ferry drops off there are lots of restaurants and kind of typically Chinese restaurants mm. so it's still a good good day out even if you've got um, younger children okay what else would you add the beaches um, definitely take if it's a nice warm time of year um, and you want to send, spend some time on the beach um, I would recommend Big Wave Bay which is at at the south end of um, Hong Kong Island. Again, you'd need to get a bus or a taxi down there. There's no MTR stop. The MTR doesn't run sort of south of the island. But Big Wave Bay is quite fun because sometimes you do get big waves and you can hire bodyboards and surfboards in the little shacks down on the beach. Um, and there's some really fun little eating places as well, just sort of Dai Pai Dong or Thai food or Chinese food down there. Um, and it's a nice beach. I have to tell you something funny about Big Wave Bay. When we first moved to Sydney, I took the kids up to Man Manly Beach and when we got there my little boy was like it's just like Big Wave Bay oh, <laughs> was like, oh, not... uh, it's, it's really not <laughs> I don't think you can compare Manly Beach that's to Big so... Wave Bay but <laughs> oh, oh, that's so lovely the first time we went to Big Wave Bay actually there were absolutely no waves at all oh <laughs> confusing um but normally it's, it's not too bad um Sheko is another good one Sheko is a slightly larger beach um I'd probably avoid it on weekends but during the week it's quite quiet and there's a really nice um beachside restaurant called C Coca Cabana oh, I uh, love Coca Cabana yeah it's lovely and the kids can kind of run around on the beach Another good one down in Stanley, don't head to Stanley Main Beach. I would get a taxi just around the corner, it's not very far, um, to St. Stephen's Beach, which is a lot quieter. And last year it had a little kiosk as well. I'm not sure if it does this year. Um, but St. Stephen's Beach is really cute. It's a nice cove and it kind of looks back onto Stanley. Um, we live up in the New Territories and there are some lovely beaches up here too. Clearwater Bay is a good area to head to if you've got a bit more time. You can get an MTR train to a stop called Hang Hao, 
and then just grab a taxi and head to either Clearwater Bay One Beach or Clearwater Bay Two Beach. They're nice and sandy. There's kiosks on the beach so you can buy snacks. You can hire parasols and deck chairs and things and you can swim as well. They're very nice. Also a nice day trip, which is also nearby to where I live, is um, a fishing town called Sai Kung. And if you head up to Sai Kung, it's, it's quite a nice little town. There's lots of places to eat and there's a nice seafront that you can walk along. And on the seafront are lots of sampan ladies. So the sam- a sampan pan is like a traditional Hong Kong boat. It's quite a small boat. Um, and you can hire a sampan lady to take you out to some of the beaches on the islands beyond Hong, uh, beyond Sai Kung, which is a really fun way to spend the day. Yeah, it's a really nice way to see a completely different side of Hong Kong, isn't it? Yeah, it's far from the madding crowds, as they would say. It's, it's quite yeah, sort of quite rural up here. As I say, it used to be, a, well, it still is, it's a, it's a fishing town. So when you walk along the seafront, you can see the fishing boats selling their wares from the water. Um, they use nets, pull the money down from the customers on the pier, and then they fill the net up with the fish and send it back up to them. It's quite interesting to watch. But yeah, Sai Kung is a nice, nice day trip. But again, you would need a taxi or get on the MTR, head to Hang Hao and get a taxi from Hang Hao Station. Yes, we always enjoyed a day trip up to Sai Kung. And I have to say, it's somewhere we used to take our visitors to as well. Okay, so do you have any other little gems to share with us? Chilin Nunnery, if you head to Diamond Hill on the MTR, um, it's it's a nice little park. It's surrounded by high rise, so it's quite interesting. And it's just this serene little spot, little park with lots of water and fish uh, and the nunnery. Um, it's, it's quite small, but it's an interesting spot to have a little wander around. And another, actually, another outlying island I was going to add is Chung, Chung Chow, which is an hour by ferry, but it's worth going to. It's got lots of beaches and it's also got pirate caves, which might be cool. interesting children see so many fun things who said so hong kong who said hong kong isn't family friendly yeah it's it's good it is good once you know what you're doing it's great <laughs> <laughs> okay let's talk about accommodation then you've already talked about the airport being on lantau island which is also where hong kong disneyland is and of course disneyland is one option to stay isn't it i mean they've got three hotels at hong kong disneyland and as you'd expect they're all very child friendly but I wouldn't generally recommend people spending their whole time there. So just to give listeners an idea of the layout of Hong Kong, um, so you've got the airport is around a 25-minute train or taxi ride into the city, and the city of Hong Kong is kind of divided between Hong Kong Island and Kowloon, which is on the mainland. And most visitors to Hong Kong would choose to stay either on Hong Kong Island or in Chim Sha Choi or TST as it's known, which is kind of the area that borders the harbour on Kowloon. And either of those options, you're right in amongst everything and you've got great public transport options. But Carolyn, I know as part of your job, you get to look around a lot of the hotels in Hong Kong. So maybe you can give us some picks. Yeah, there are some wonderful hotels. It really depends on your budget. The main areas are, like the most central areas, are Central on Hong Kong Island side or TST, which is just on the other side of the harbour. So you can, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit with Hong Kong. You can stay in the Ritz on TST side, which is quite amazing, um, or the new Rosewood Hotel that's just opened, or the new St. Regis Hotel that's just opened, or, um, I mean, there's every major luxe hotel chain is, is probably represented here. Um, I would say with families, uh, I mean, some of the big hotels are, are good for families if, if, if you're looking high end. The Four Seasons, strangely, and you wouldn't expect it because it's a very business hotel, is very good for children. Um, they provide little robes for the children and the restaurants are very child friendly, um, which you wouldn't expect actually at the Four Seasons, but that, that is a good one. It also has a beautiful pool deck on the roof, probably the best pool deck in Hong Kong. It's got two pools up there and also they provide swimming nappies and there are there's a whole sort of net full of um, inflatable toys for children to play with. So you wouldn't expect it, but that, that is actually quite a child friendly hotel. Um, I would also look at, if you're not here very long um, and you want to locate yourself closer to the airport, have a look at Auberge in Discovery Bay. That is very family friendly and it's very close to the airport and it is in the incredibly family friendly district of Discovery Bay and it's close to Disneyland. Another good one is the Meridian Hotel in Cyberport. Cyberport is outside of Central, sort of heading towards the south of the island. So it's a bit greener, a bit more open space. They've got a 
sort of a fairly large grassy area outside the front of the hotel that the kids can kind of run around on. And it's just adjacent to Cyberport Park, which is another big open space. For a more budget option that's quite central, I would have a look at the brand new Hotel Purple, which is opened in a fairly local neighbourhood close to Causeway Bay. So it's not actually in Causeway Bay. It's a five minute walk away, but it's it's close to Tinhau MTR stop. It's close to Victoria Park. And as I say, you can walk into Causeway Bay. It's on the tram line. It's on um, an airport bus line. The airport bus stops right outside the front of the hotel. And it does have some very family friendly rooms including dining table, lounge area, fold out sofa bed for children and bedroom for adults. So I'd definitely take a look at Hotel Purple if you're looking at a more bu- sort of budget friendly um, hotel. Um, yeah, but as I say, this, you know, if budget's not a problem. Um, yeah, sky's the limit really in Hong Kong. Oh, you also looked around the, uh, there's a new Marriott opened at Ocean yeah, Park, hasn't there? Marriott. Yes, the Marriott opened um, at the beginning of this year and it's lo- it's located right next to Ocean Park. It's called the Ocean Park Marriott Hotel. Um, yeah, it's beautifully done it's brand new it's got four resort pools out the front it's got some fantastic family-friendly restaurants um, nice brunch on the weekend um, and it's right next to the park in fact the bedrooms I think overlook the park which I guess is pretty exciting for the children and they also offer friend, uh, child-friendly activities they do sort of treasure hunts and craft things and the rooms come with little gifts for the children backpacks and fluffy toys and things so that's a, that's a really good option at Actually, that's a brand new hotel, only open this year. And actually, it looks like it's outside of the city, but there's an MTR station right there, yeah. and it's like two it's, stops to get to Admiralty, I think it is. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I think it's one stop, actually. Oh, one stop. Um, so, yeah, you can, it's right, and there's a pedestrian walkway from the hotel to the MTR stop, so it really is no problem at all. Um, and in a taxi, it's it's probably not very much anyway. But yeah, it's it's very well located. Okay, great. Okay, let's get on to my favourite topic, which is food. Uh, <laughs> Hong Kong is rightly famous for its amazing Cantonese cuisine. But how easy is it to dine out with kids in Hong Kong? Yeah, pretty good, actually. We dine fairly regularly with our children. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's lots of child-friendly restaurants. There's lots. It's a big mix in Hong Kong. There's a lot of Western-style food um, and then also, obviously, Cantonese-style. Obviously, the big draw in Hong Kong is dim sum, which are little, I think it actually translates to little, little hearts. They're sort of little parcels of love with little, yeah, dumplings with different sort of things inside them. And the other famous thing about Hong Kong is the egg custard tart, which are available in in all the bakeries and things. Um, I mean, you can eat very, very cheaply in Hong Kong. You can go to some of the the food markets, which are very local and very cheap. Um, The Dai Pai Dongs, which are sort of um, the traditional sort of street food areas. Or you can go and find a very expensive restaurant or in a very expensive hotel. Um, Favourites? For us over the years, just looking at my notes here, um, I think I mentioned already Coca Cabana in Sherco, that's very good. Um, Stanley and Repulse Bay are great, and Discovery Bay, fantastic, lots and lots of family friendly restaurants. Another one I was going to mention, if your kids, if you're looking for a Western option, um, the diner in mid levels does fantastic burgers and milkshakes. If you need a break from sort of Asian food, but I would say definitely try and try the the dim sum while you're here. Any particular and recommendations for dim sum? I mean, Maxim's Palace at City Hall is the famous one that we always took visitors to. But uh, do you have any other recommendations, other restaurants you like? Yeah, I mean, they're sort of everywhere really so if you just wander along the streets in central you'll see lots of dim sum restaurants big chain is um din tai fung um there's a few of those sort of all over the city i would google that din tai fung google it and find out where your nearest branch is max noodles is another one um that started as a very famous noodle shop back in the day and now he's expanded as a chain yeah there's kind of good food everywhere um, the brunches are good. Actually, a brunch I was going to recommend is Hutong in TST. It's at One Peking. It's quite a fancy restaurant, and it's on the 31st floor. So it has the most amazing views of Hong Kong Harbour. Um, and when you go for a brunch on a weekend, under 12s eat free. There's not actually a kid's menu, but you get a really good sort of sharing experience of lots of different Chinese food. Um, there's crispy duck pancakes, they've got the dim sum, all the sort of Chinese favourites. 
Um, and they also do quite good entertainments for, well, for everybody, really. There's fortune telling, um, a fortune telling bird, no less. Yeah, um, you know, the noodle, um, noodle pulling, I think uh-huh. they call it. And um, there's a puppet show. Um, so, yeah, hutongs, are, I mean, it's not the cheapest in town, but that's quite a nice option if you want sort of a traditional meal um, with the children. I think worth it for the views, isn't it? And, oh, my God, so worth it for the views, yeah. <laughs> so good. And they do good cocktails as well. But otherwise, yeah, if you're looking just for a sort of a fun, laid-back family meal, I'd head down to Stanley, I'd help head to Re- Pulse Bay has a lovely um, seafront with play parks and things and some really sort of family friendly restaurants. Yeah, or just take a wander through Soho. There's so many restaurants and it's really hard to keep up with them all, actually. But yeah, Soho is fun, isn't it? And a lot of the restaurants there you can't book for. So actually, if you're with kids and you go early, you've probably got a good chance of just... Yeah, you should have no problems at all. Yeah, so it's it's great. Hong Kong is, is fabulous for food. It is indeed. Okay, what about packing for Hong Kong? Is there anything we should consider when packing our suitcases or any particular guidebooks you can recommend we pick up before we go? Yeah, I would say definitely pack your trainers or good walking shoes (laughs) because it can be quite steep and you can be on your feet all day. Yeah, if you've got very young children, look into stroller alternatives um, like baby carriers or or whatever. And also check what time of year you're coming because as we were talking about earlier, the weather can vary considerably. It can be incredibly cold in the winter so I would definitely bring layers if you're coming in the winter months and even in the summer pack sort of maybe light cardigans because the air conditioning can be absolutely fierce in yeah. the shopping malls. but as I say in the summer it's it's incredibly hot so you need just very light clothing and plenty of sunscreen um in terms of guidebooks I don't know you can probably research most of it online really a good app that I use quite a lot is a taxi app that's quite handy um it's called hk taxi so if you can't if you are sort of out in the wilds and you can't find a taxi you just get online and they'll come and pick you up okay so we like to finish our interviews with our fast five questions are you ready okay okay let's go tell us one hidden gem we won't find in the guidebooks a little island called yao lei y-a-u-l-e-y um, you go out from Saikung on a speedboat and you have a delicious lunch there and you swim on the very quiet beach and then you take a speedboat back to Saikung. Uh, now you stumped me because I, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> That's one of the best <laughs> days out in Hong Kong. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing we should splurge on. If you can get a babysitter, I would splurge on a very extravagant meal or maybe um, a cocktail at the Ritz. Okay, good choice. Uh, One thing we should save our money on. I think transport. I mean, if you can take the MTR, it's so efficient and so easy and and it's air conditioned and it has Wi-Fi um, and it's cheap as chips. Yep. Okay. One can't live without app that we should download before we go. Um, Actually, I would say that. HK taxi app I was talking about certain times of the day it can be very difficult getting taxis even in central because they have these times they call them changeover times so between three and four o'clock it's almost impossible to get a taxi or if you're kind of a little bit out of the way and you can't find one tap on it tap where you are tap where you want to go and they'll pretty much turn up within minutes yeah I agree I used to use that all the time as well okay and finally where will we get our playground with a coffee and a view okay I would head down to Stanley there's a pirate ship down there and there are lots of um, coffee shops sort of around it's sort of in a little bit of a town square and there's lots of sort of coffee shops surrounding it Um, or I would go to Repulse Bay there are little play areas on the seafront as you walk along and there's a whole strip of shops a place called the Pulse um, including quite a few cafes. Um, another good playground is up on the peak, actually. If you go to the peak and then you go a little bit further up the peak, there's a play park sort of right on the very top, but there isn't a coffee shop up there. Oh, you're making me feel very nostalgic. These are all my all my usual hangouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Carolyn, thank you so much for sharing all your amazing insider tips for Hong Kong today. Uh, No, not at all. It's been a pleasure. uh, Before you go, please can you just tell us where we can find you if we want to know more about Hong Kong Family Traveller magazine or where we can find you on social media? Okay, so Hong Kong Family Traveller is a bi-monthly print and e-magazine. You can find us at www.hongkongfamilytraveller.com. 
I'm also on Instagram as HK Traveling Mum, um, and I also run a Facebook group called Hong Kong Traveling Mums, which feel free to reach out and join, where we share lots of travel tips um, and insider information. So you're very, very welcome to join that too. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now remember, we will be sharing everything we talked about today with any useful links in our show notes for today's episode, which you can find at littlecitytrips.com forward slash podcast. And you will also find loads of great information for visiting Hong Kong in our family guide to Hong Kong on our website, littlecitytrips.com. If you have any questions following today's episode, you can also jump over to our Facebook group, City Travel with Kids. And we can chat more about Hong Kong there or about any questions you have about traveling with kids. And if you don't want to miss the next episode of City Travel with Kids, remember to subscribe to the podcast. Until next time, happy traveling, friends. Mm -hmm.